Well, Tyree Nichols loved sunsets. He was a father. He'd been out to photograph the twilight sky in his home city of Memphis when five black police officers pulled him over. The lady said it was for reckless driving. There's no evidence to substantiate that. It's still unclear why they stopped him. What is clear is that Tyree Nichols was subjected to a savage and horrific beating, taking sustained blows from the officers as he cried out for his mother, and he died three days later. The beating was captured on body cam and CCTV, and a warning, viewers may find this footage upsetting. You might get sprayed again. Hey! Hey, hey. hey Mike, give me hey. Hey. Hey, bro. Oh. Watch out, watch out! Watch out. Oh. Well, that is just what it looks like. It's five black officers beating a black man. Horrific, appalling, incredibly hard to watch. I'm not surprised by the global revulsion to this brutality. But what I am surprised by is the immediate attempt by many high-profile liberal commentators to blame this on racism and white supremacy. Here's CNN com commentator Van Jones. Black people are at risk from police no matter what color. Uh, black, white, brown, you talk to African Americans, they'll tell you, um, it, it doesn't matter. There's this per pervasive view from law enforcement that if you're black, you're dangerous. Really? So black people killed a black person, and that's racist. Well, Black Lives Matter issued a statement saying that all police represent the interests of capitalism and impel state-sanctioned violence. Anyone who works within a system to perpetuate state-sanctioned violence is complicit in upholding white supremacy. So these five black police officers were white supremacists, apparently. Jamil Hill from The Atlantic agreed, explaining the entire system of policing is based on white supremacist violence. Again, apparently nothing to do with just five horrible thugs wearing police uniforms killing a black man. It was apparently about racism and white supremacy. Well, joining me now, Black Lives Matter organiser and activist Iman Aiton and rapper and podcaster Zuby. Welcome to both of you. Iman, I don't get this narrative at all yeah. that is coming out. It's been coming here from people as well, that somehow this is all about racism and white supremacy. It's not. It's about five poorly trained, thuggish black police officers killing a black man who did nothing to deserve it. That's it. OK, so I just have to start with saying that video was absolutely disgusting, one of the worst videos I've ever seen right. in my entire life. Right, and it life. goes on and on and yep, on. Yeah, it was disgusting. There was two versions of it, the body uh, the body footage and, the, of course, the pole from yes. across the road. Absolutely disgusting. So I'm absolutely horrified at the fact that, of course, it was five black people. Um, but for me personally, this is about an abuse of power and a disregard of human life, and those individuals need to be accountable for their actions. That I need to... Don't disagree. Clear. What's it got to do with... Racism and white supremacy. So people Why are also, white people responsible for this? OK, so people could also argue that this is due to internalised racism, which is a byproduct of societal or institutional racism, also referred to as white supremacy. So black police officers become white supremacist racists who kill black people because they work in an atmosphere of white supremacy. Is that it? I can explain it a little bit better. OK, so anti-blackness is baked into society here and in the US, and black people are not impervious to that. And so what people fail to realise... So black hold people this, are anti-black? Yep, this, exactly. So let me explain it. I know Which it's very confusing. Nonsense. So let me explain it. Let me explain it, Piers. So what people fail to realise is that when black people have to contend with racism, they can end up internalising it. And that can result in low self-esteem, self-loathing and rejection of one's community. And when you combine those feelings, which, as we know, are also referred to as unconscious bias. When you have those feelings and they are compounded by hierarchy and power, it can lead to an individual abusing said power and projecting their self-hate onto another. And this is it's why, in my opinion, why we see black and white police officers killing more black people than we do white. Reason why is because of racism, which includes internalised racism, Pierce. Right. I think that's complete nonsense. You would, me... because you're a white man and you don't understand. Exactly, I'm white, therefore no, my skin colour it. means it's I have... because you don't have the lived experience. My skin colour means I have no, nothing I mean, to no do with it. All right, like well, let me go to a black man experience. and see if he's allowed to have a view. Zuby, what's your view? OK, so I agree with the first half of everything that was said there. I agree that the video was disgusting. I agree that this is an issue of training, and I agree that this is an issue of the human heart. I think that any attempt to put the blame on this in any way, shape, or form on racism or white supremacy or white people in general is absolutely ridiculous. I also think it's pretty degrading because this sort of idea stems from the notion that black people 
black men, black women, that we do not have full agency and responsibility and therefore accountability for our actions and our words. We end up in these ridiculous situations where no matter the permutation, no matter what happens, even if there's not a single white person involved in the situation, in the Memphis police force, even the police, uh, the police chief is a black woman, the large percentage of the force is black, and people are still trying to lean on this white supremacy is the answer and the reason for everything. And honestly, it's lame, and as someone who's lived my entire life as a, as a black male, uh, certainly I've never been possessed by this sort of phantom of, of white supremacy that's made me want to attack anybody, let alone another black person. And I think that we need to put the blame and responsibility squarely on the individuals who were involved I in this. I completely agree. It's tragic I, that this young man yeah, died. I, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, just to note some statistics about the Memphis Police Department, that 65% of Memphis' are, uh, population is black. 58% mm -hmm. of the entire police force in Memphis yeah, is black. Is black. Mm -hmm. the, the police chief is black. was a black woman, yeah. right? Uh, and so on and so on. So... You take all that in totality, you think, well, okay, well, where is this institutionalized white supremacy coming from, given the institution is actually served predominantly by black people for a population that is predominantly black as well? So I don't get that point. The second point I make is this. I think there's a wider issue here. The demonization of the police in America, calling them all a bunch of vile racists, has led to many older, experienced, good police officers mm. who are not vile racists, quitting the force all over the country. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, in Memphis, for example, they had a massive reduction, 20%, between 2011 and 2017, of police officers. 20% of went from mm -hmm. the force. And so to try and restore the numbers, they made it easier to become a police officer. They reduced the restrictions, reduced the qualifications. Two of the five officers involved in killing this poor young man went through that process in that period mm -hmm. of not being required to have the same sort of qualifications that they used to to join the Memphis Police Department. So you have a, a bunch of people being brought in who are poorly trained, yep. who are not qualified to do the job, mm -hmm. who end up committing this kind of crime. That has nothing to do with racism and white supremacy. That has everything to do, I think, with perhaps an over-demonised force in general with a lot of bad apples in it, mm. but over-demonised force leading to many people quitting and being replaced with people just not up to the job. I think it's... Well, everything that you said I don't disagree with. Um, I think it's not about conflating the two things. It's just about uh, presenting a different perspective, an alternative perspective that should be considered because internal racism is a real thing, so therefore it should be considered. You just heard when a black man about, yes, very, in very a very considered that. way mm -hmm. say that basically you're talking nonsense. No, this, so he never the said, idea that you so can I'll, just... I'll ask that. So, Zubi, do you believe that internal racism is nonsense? Do you believe that black people cannot internalise racism? Do you believe that? I don't believe that it's completely impossible. Okay. I don't think Perfect. it's impossible for you heard a that, black right? I don't think it's impossible for a person of any race or ethnicity to harbor hatred or animosity towards people who may look like them or share some things in common. What I don't what I completely disagree with is the idea that in every single one of these situations that no matter what happens we just jump to white supremacy is the problem. You, you see, we've seen this happen many, many times. And I agree with you. And I, agree I think with you. one of the biggest issues with it is, OK, I think one of the biggest issues as well is it, it's actually a distraction from a very important conversation which uh, Piers was leaning into there, which is that when it comes to the police in the USA and also in other countries, there's clearly an issue of character, qualifications, and prejudice. training. I and don't know prejudice. exactly... Yeah, and prejudice is the foundation for all yes, forms of discrimination, and, and including that, sexism, misogyny, racism, and the list goes on. So, if you have not dealt with it, your prejudice can, within the institution, a, a it will manifest in racism. But, that's, yeah, a fact. Man, man, that's a fact. A, you're talking okay, over. That's a fact. I, I, I think you're it's going a, to, I, I'm making a good point. But yeah. secondly, you're bringing in prejudice, I, I think, I think bigotry, this is, racism. Yeah. None yeah. of which had anything to do with this particular incident. What are you talking about? I just explained to you internal racism, which is based off of prejudice. It had nothing to do with why these and I said it should be considered. I said it should be considered. Well, let's let finish the point you were making. OK, the, the, uh, okay. even following on from that point, I'd also say w this is mind reading as well. So even trying to bring racism into this conversation, let's say these guys did not have guns and badges. Let's say these was, this was just a group of random thugs, five black men beating up another black man. Even in that situation, even outside the police force, I've still seen situations where people try to blame this 
somehow on this specter of white supremacy. And as I've said, frankly, it's embarrassing. And as I a black just person, I have just, just as much clear. agency and accountability. Okay. Um, as I said, black people have full responsibility yep. and accountability, just like it would be ridiculous to see a video of white people beating up a white man. I've, there are videos out there of white police beating up white people. Well, I would also make the, the point well, that this is some of sort of, of internalized well, I would also, racism. Look, if silly. I could just, a video, on that point, I would, make, I would also make the point that if people genuinely believed it was racism, then given these scenes were as horrific as the George Floyd killing, in my, in my view, no, no better, no worse. I mean, this was, went on for a, a much longer period and was disgusting and abhorrent to watch. Completely innocent guy just getting beaten and then he died. Um, that given that, if it was racism that people genuinely believe was the motivation, we would see the same scenes on the streets of cities all over America that we saw after George Floyd's death. We would see the riots. We would see burning cities. We would see that kind of intensity of reaction. But the truth is, even the people claiming this is about racism and white supremacy, they don't believe it. Because if they did no, believe they that, if they did believe that, they'd be out on the streets saying, saying it. it. And they're no, not. They are saying it. They are saying it because they do believe but it. But they're not protesting in the same way because it's in their heart interesting. they Which know one? it's not okay, racist. So I, I agree with you in that. I've always said that. I don't subscribe to any type of hypocrisy, right? So if white people are going to kill black people, we should be outraged. If black people kill black people, we should be outraged. So therefore, there are many things that Sabia have said that I agree with. There are many things that you have said that I agree with. But what I'm also trying to say is that, firstly, this is about abuse of power and a disregard of life. The yes. individuals should have, uh, should make sure that they're, they're, they are accountable for well, their We can all their agree actions. on that. That is clear. But we also need to, need to take into account that black people internalise racism and they can perpetuate that racism within institutions. That all is right. a fact. Yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you what is a fact. This was five black police officers killing a black man, not because of racism and white supremacy or because anything a white person no, had done. No, wrong. But because they actually didn't know how to do their jobs, it got completely out of control. They behaved like a, a mob, a frenzied mob, just like and they completely lost. And they completely people, lost right? control. Because they're got thugs to, as well. White we got, people, when white police beat up, you black know people, They're also thugs as well. Because black people aren't just thugs when they beat up black people. Yeah, I didn't and say white people can also be perceived as yeah, thugs when this they beat had, up black people. This, Let's just be clear on your language. Demand, you can keep no, saying whatever you want. This language. had nothing to do with racism or white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And as Zuby rightly said, I actually think you it's them embarrassing. You called black thugs, though, didn't you? They Where were you black thugs? thugs. OK, but you don't call white people I, black I, thugs when I, they I, kill can black I say people, one, though, Can I say one more thing here, I call white people white... I call white thugs white thugs. You don't. Of course I do. There is far more emphasis on black people. There is far more emphasis. This is this is reality of media. There is no nonsense. Can I jump in here? Final word to Zuby. Connotations like thugs. Final word to Zuby. Can I jump in here? I think... I think that in all of our, in, in both the US and in the UK, when we can have these conversations without the words white and black even being brought into the picture, then I think we'll be making some so good headway. So you're offering colorblind, which is serious rational. I totally agree. And actually, colorblind is I, I actually completely and agree with that. And I'm purely, quite disappointed that you said that as a black man. If purely talked about the police brutality here in that context without mentioning skin color... We won't get anywhere. We would actually get somewhere to, to no, trying to help the situation. But by making it about race where it doesn't exist, we actually cause more problems than we're already racism. there. Uh, Iman, thank you. Uh, Zubi, appreciate you joining me. Thank you very much. Good to have you on the show.